So if genetics is the study of inherited traits, we know that the molecule that carries that hereditary information needs four different properties. It needs to be able to encode that information somehow in the structure of the molecule. We need that molecule to be copyable because we need to be able to take that information and transmit it to either a progeny cells or parents to offspring. It needs to be able to direct the, um, the cell's processes. And finally, it needs to be able to change, right? It needs to be able to mutate because it's these mutations and the changes in subsequent phenotype that drive evolution. And so the structure of DNA was determined by Watson, Crick, and Franklin, and it helps address two of these properties, right? And so the structure that they determined, I'm not going to try to draw the entire molecular structure or even a double helix, but we know that that structure has two strands and the nucleotides in those two strands have one of four bases, right? And those four bases are adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. And in particular, if one strand is adenine, cytosine, thymine, cytosine, then the other strand must be thymine, guanine, adenine, guanine, right? And the reason that the second strand is constrained is because of these Watson-Crick base pairing rules, right? In the two strands of the DNA, adenine and thymine are always a pair, and cytosine and guanine are always a pair, right? You never see thymine paired with guanine or cytosine paired with adenine, for example. And so that addresses two of these questions here, right? How is information encoded? Well, it's encoded in the sequence of bases that are attached to the nucleotides, right? This is like information in a computer, right? An image in a computer, for example, is encoded by a sequence of ones and zeros. And instead of that, here, the information is encoded in a sequence of bases. And second, this kind of double-stranded Watson and Crick base pair structure addresses how you can go about copying it because you can copy this molecule by unzipping it. And so if I unzip it, and now the other, the other side of the molecule is over here, because of that Watson and Crick base pairing scheme, each of these two strands can now serve as a template for the other strand to be synthesized, right? And so an enzyme can come along on this strand and it can fill in a thymine, a guanine, an adenine, and a guanine. And that same enzyme can come in on this strand and fill in a cytosine, a thymine, excuse me, a cytosine, right? And an adenine right, that the two initial strands both serve as templates for newly synthesized strands. And now where you started with one molecule, now you've got two. So we've taken care of information encoding. We've taken care of how it's copyable based on its structure. What about the other two necessary properties, right? We know that the sequence of DNA has to encode some sort of information in these bases, but what is that information, right? How does that information direct the functioning of the processes of a cell and how can it change? Right. And to answer that question, we actually need to have a quick review of another class of biological molecules, which are proteins.